Hello and welcome to the Troy and Hurling Show with me, Michael Verney, and delighted to be joined once again by Eddie Brennan and John Milan to look back on another weekend of hurling action. We had two preliminary All Ireland quarterfinals. Ned, I'll throw it over to you straight away. You know, after the Munster Championship and after beating Limerick, all the talk was about Cork and Cork being genuine All Ireland contenders. I know this was a game that you just needed to win and get back on the road, but like, would you view them as genuine All Ireland contenders based on Saturday night, a nine point victory over Offaly with the best will in the world? I thought this was going to be a potential battering for my, for my own county, but we performed with a hell of a lot of credit. But from a Cork point of view, and I know Pat Ryan was very, very disappointed with the performance after, where would you see it in the grand? scheme of things uh, it's hard to know to be honest Michael because it's 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 a kind of a match that's it's very hard to get yourself properly stimulated for as a player because yeah, I suppose there's, there's a lot of psychology at play because you don't know what kind of awfully are going to turn up and, and we'll talk about that in a second I think fair play to them because look I've expressed my views on this match and, and I think it has absolutely run its course and it's time to to change that, but uh, they they done what they done. I I think it's you know for the McDonough teams it's disappointing. It just it it takes the loss off the end of your season because you should be able to go off and enjoy it with your friends and your teammates. You put in a lot. Um, but that aside, going back to the original question from a car perspective, um, I don't know. I don't know what way you can you can assess it. They, they hemorrhage two goals at the very end, which will be disappointed with. I think. From what I gather, Patrick Collins had a decent game. He brought a few good saves off. So I think that aspect of it, and we were, you know, kind of kicking this around last week. We thought, God, the Cork, if Cork rolls town with, with the way they can, we thought they'd lash up, you know, 5 28 or did they were capable of that. But um I don't know because it's very hard to get your mojo really, really in the right place for a game like this because you know, you, you you run a train over the opposition and ah, sure, it's, it doesn't matter. And then you stutter through it. It's, it's oh, Jesus. So the reality is Cork have to be ready for this weekend for Dublin. That's that's the big one. And yeah, Pat Ryan will have wanted probably a, a tidier performance. I think a, a real professional performance is what you want in a match like that. But uh, at the same time, you know, you look at it and you go, God, this is the same team that's... Uh, you know, pulled the rug from underneath the All Ireland champions in 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 one of the most epic matches we've seen in a long time in Parky Creeve. So, I suppose that's a hard high to get back to. But uh, this weekend, look, what do you do? Only this this is a real kind of a mind focus because they don't know what kind of form Dublin are going to come into in this match. So they have to, you know, they have to be at it. And the reality is, I suppose, all will be revealed. We'll see, you know, what Cork are made of. We can probably get a proper assessment of them. Um, but I definitely think that, you know, I agree with Pat Ryan to a certain extent. He'll have been disappointed with aspects of the game that 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 awfully in their situation, having won what they won and where they're at uh, as regards, you know, what what, what they're after. Uh, they, you know, awfully were after respectability, I think. And, and I don't mean that in a, in, a, in a bad way. I mean, they, they, they had their highs of two victories in the space of a couple of days. And then having to go through this. So I think Pat Ryan will be disappointed that this awfully team were able to punch nice holes in his defence. And I think that's what will have disappointed him. That's a concentration thing. That's, you know, if you're going to be contenders in the All-Ireland final, you have to be concentrated and you have to be really, really focused. And I think that's the area that will have disappointed him. We've talked about being up for games before or not been up for them. It was funny. I was just watching it on GA Go because I was otherwise engaged, but I was chatting to someone that was down there and they said that uh, before the ball was thrown in, Kieran Burke, the awfully football, or awfully fullback, I should say, gave it to Alan Conley before throwing. And oh. uh, Conley kind of stood back a small bit and he was kind of, it's kind of like, and you've said about this, Ned, before, and I've always said yeah. this is one of the things I admire most about Limerick is that you could be so far, you could, they can be so far off it or look like they're so far off it in certain games but they managed to turn it around and I just I just wonder was that symptomatic of the car kind of frame of mind going into this game that they were maybe something was thrown at them maybe that they weren't expected what do you think Mull I, I would just have slight worries that the you know, Cork were they were average the first day against Waterford. Their three games since then, I thought they'd been very, very good, particularly the latter two, and they'd been really, really professional. What do you think, Mull? Is this is this more credit to Offaly, or is it uh, you know a few little question marks about Cork? 
I think I think Eddie Eddie's on the button. I think it's it's a case of two things. I think Pat Ryan is on the button, and I think we've got to give great credit to to Offaly. I did say last week. I I I I thought Offaly would would throw it down to uh, the Cork. I didn't foresee that. But the handicap was eighteen points. I thought after the the, the league drubbing, I thought you know there was there was going to be a rerun of that, and you know. What you were just saying there, Kieran Burke, you know, let Alan Connolly know before the ball was thrown in that, hey, you know what, you're not going to be doing what you're on in walls and through us in, in the what well, like you did in, in the in, in in the league. And he he was he was brilliant. I think from a car point of view, it's been proven now with this car team, this car group of players, when are they at their best? They're at their best when they're being written off. When they play with a chip on their shoulder, when they're fucking pissed off. You know, when they're really pissed off and annoyed and, you know, nobody's giving them a chance and that's when this car team are at their best and sometimes they can fall into, you know, these lull situations where they just take it for granted that, hey, you know, we're, we're car and we'll just rock up and, you know, what we've done before will will justify getting us, getting us over the line. And look, that was proven against Waterford this year and it was proven uh, again the weekend against Offaly. But look, to be fair to them, they weren't after playing for for uh, three three weeks, three weeks. And I suppose from from a car point of view, going up to Tullamore, you know, they were in a, a no win situation, whether they won the game by 18, 19 points, whether they won by by nine points, you know, you know, they were they weren't gonna get, get any get any credit. But no. to be to be to be fair to them, the one worry that I would have and Pat Ryan touched on is that they were sloppy. The work rate wasn't there in contrast to, to previous matches. And the the worry I would have is that they coughed up 319 against Offaly. And at times in that match, they were opened up very, very easily at the back. That could have been five that could have been 522 more easily. Abs- ab- absolutely. And that would be that would be the worry for 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 me, if I was a Cork supporter going going forward, that you know, to be coughing up that type of scoreline, and you know, you would just touch on there, Michael. It could have very easily been five twenty two, and I think possibly Joyce is possibly going to have to go back in, in, into that back line, shore shore it up a bit. But you know what? It mightn't be a bad thing either from a Cork point of view because you know. They were getting a bit. They are getting a bit giddy down there. They were getting a bit giddy, and you know, talk of oh, you know, we're going to be the team to stop Limerick, and this year we're going to win the All Ireland. It might just dilute, dampen the expectation levels uh, a bit, and I don't think that will be no harm actually going into this weekend against Dublin, and potentially against uh, uh, a fixture against uh, Limerick because. You know yourself, lads. You know when you're being talked up, and we've seen time and time again. Just if 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 if, if that fixture, you know, it is the play out. You know we've seen time and time again when teams are being talked up against Limerick. You know that plays into Limerick's hands. So from a car point of view, even going into this weekend, I don't think it might be a bad thing. You know Pat Ryan can take the learnings from last week. You know, and I'm sure you know he'll be saying to his players this week, "Well, look, lads." We can't have another rerun of, of of what what unfolded last Saturday night against the uh, against the uh, Offaly, and I think that's a big big plus for for Cork going into this weekend and possibly going forward for the rest of the championship. Well, as you say, even Mull on that lads, isn't that doesn't that tie into what we were talking about there last week? And, and I think Mull, you said this about trust in the team. You know what you're going to get with them, and I think that's been probably the the dilemma or the conundrum with this Cork team for a long time now. You know, God, you shouldn't have to be pissed off and written off to get a performance like they did. Like, I think that's the frustrating thing that must be there for probably management and even supporters too. Like, and, and ourselves as hurling people, you're kind of going, you know, we, we said about the, the way they hurled against Limerick that night was brilliant. It was it was real proper, you know, what you associate with, with Cork teams of old. And like, you're kind of going, that's probably a mindset thing that they should be able to roll into that match and yet, there's other teams involved, and 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 it's a hard one to get yourself up for properly. But that's where you have to be if you're going to be genuine All Ireland contenders, and and that's but, probably the issue with Cork is we you can't trust them. 
But that goes back to the trust issue, what you were just touching on and what we've, we've touched on in, in the previous podcast. The two teams that are the top two at the moment, and we, just, we said it last week, are both Limerick and Kilkenny. Why? Because they consistently turn up week after week and they perform. And from 1 to 15, even 1 to 18, you know, you can trust the majority of their players. There's still question marks for a few card players. I mean, now there's some exceptional players and when they turn it on, they're as good as anything in the country. Yeah. But I still question that there's a couple of players that I would have a question mark over. And when it comes to that trust, can you trust them on the big day going forward for the remainder of this championship? Only time is going to tell. Well, if they need a point to prove, I think Pat, Pat Ryan does have a bit of a stick to beat them with this week. Um, but I don't think they're going to be written off for the rest of the year, boys. So, well, if they need to be peed off and all that kind of crack, I don't, I don't think they're going to be written off for the next three games anyway. I think they're going to be fancied if they if they do continue to win. But uh, just from an awfully point of view, Mull, like as I said, I was very fearful going into this fixture, um, beaten by nine rather than Cork getting two kind of goals in garbage time at the end. It was awfully getting goals and staying pushing. We could have had a bit more as well. I thought we asked serious enough questions at Cork at different stages the game threatened to get away from us but never really did um, when you take into account the under 20 success winning the McDonough playing a week after and all the celebrations that come with like I don't know you're talking about being giddy I'd be I'd be a bit giddy not for next year necessarily but for, for the coming years because this, yeah. this was a big jump forward for Offaly Mull yeah, absolutely. And I think Richie, Richie uh, Hogan broke it down perfect in the aftermath of the match. He said, like, you know, you can see the, they're, they're, well, they're an extremely well-coached team. That's, that's evident by how they're playing. Um, some of their patterns of play are a, a, a joy to watch. Uh, but they're just not there yet. They're building. And as Richie Hogan said, they're, they're probably two years away from really being there but you know they can take an enormous amount of positivity out of out of this year and I, I'm so happy that they they finished on a high and let's be honest about it yeah you know that was it that is that's 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 as good as what what awfully could have hoped for the weekend and they did I, I, I'm 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 thankful that they, they finished the year on a high and that there's something to go away on build on Johnny Kelly in the aftermath of the match you know, he touched on that, you know, he needs to sit down with the, with the county board, iron out a few things. They need a couple more of these uh, under-20s coming through. Uh, the interview with, with Brian Dyden, the aftermath of the match as well, you know, he said that, you know, some of these 20s now need to buy into kind of the, 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 the strength and condition. I think probably from an awfully point of view, what's, what's probably key now, and, and look, it, it's probably Dyden's uh, probably last big big shout of... of, of uh, putting things in place. I think what possibly should ha should happen is, is try and tie Johnny Kelly down for the next three years and even try get Leo O'Connor to commit to another three years with the under-20s because I think that marriage between the two of them, Leo O'Connor with the 20s and Johnny Kelly with the seniors is is, is working so well. And it's even evident in, in, in the style of play that the 20s are playing the exact same way as, as the seniors. And I think there's massive, massive positivity for 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 Offaly going forward. Even even the weekend, I thought Dan Burke was was, was brilliant, lads. Oh. I, even, I I said it in the WhatsApp group. I would have given him man of the match. I know I know Conor Laham was 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 very good. Carl King, Jesus, he has he has he has a touch of Brian Wheelan about him. You know, you can play him wing back, midfield. You could, he's so versatile. You can play him corner back. Uh, and, and Charlie you Mitchell. Know, Charlie Mitchell as well and you know it's they're in, a, they're in a very 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 good place now going forward and I just think they have to build on the weekend they have to build on on, on the under 20 success uh, one even question I'd even ask you Michael you know for you know these 20s coming through if I could even ask you five years time I want you to give me your top three of in the order of three two one <laughs> who the top three out of, uh, I'm going to put you in the spot who the top three are out of this year's under 20s where in five years time you say he's going to be the number one lad he's going to be two and he's going to be three so give me your top three Bernie no bother I know bother I'll, I'll give it to you um, Screeny will be three 
Dan Burke would be two and Breck and Kavanagh would be one. Bre- I think I would rate Breck and Kavanagh unbelievably highly. He's so stylish, so good. Can play cornerback, wingback, fullback, centre-back, midfield even. That would be my three. But the, 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 the real satisfying thing from my point of view when you ask me that question, well, like... I haven't mentioned Cottle King. I haven't mentioned Donald Shirley, who are both playing seniors already. I haven't yeah. mentioned Liam Hoare, who who would could easily step in as senior keeper next year. And I know I'm not putting pressure on them, but there's a lot of guys there that you think there's pot- good potential for them to turn into really good senior hurlers in four to five years. So I'd be excited enough about where they could be in four or five years. We're coming after you, Ned. It might take a couple yeah. of years. It might take a couple of years, but we're coming after you. But, 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 but even, even, t- very, even, even, even very fast forward 12 months time, right? The next year is then so championship, right? They'll fancy it against Antrim. They'll fancy it against Dublin. Uh, they'll half fancy it against Wexford. And you know what? The way, the, 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 the way Galway are at the moment, you know, if, if Galway have to come to Tullamore, they'll half fancy it against Galway. So it's, it's still going to be a big, big bonus to, to, to next year's then so championship. And, and look, they, they'll, they like probably three or four of those fixtures and say, you know what? There's no reason why we can't go and win two or three games out of those fixtures. Now, look, Kilkenny will be, it'll be a big ask, but there's no reason why they, they can't be targeting saying, you know what, lads? We can... The mind trying to stay up and, and you know, remain in, in Lee McCarthy. If, if I was Johnny Kelly next year, and if he gets a couple more of these 20s in, into the fold... They should be targeting just trying to finish finish in the top three and get into the All Ireland series. Oh, I take I take your yeah. point. I take your point. But to me now, next year is all about preservation. I I'd be probably oh. I'd probably be circling two fixtures. Been honest with you, and one would be Antrim, and the other would probably be Dublin. It's just about staying up. But go on, come in there, Ned. I I, I, I just think it's 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 probably just there's, there's huge positives, right? And again, we've you know we've touched on all the reasons why that happened because you had to have put the work in. You have to have a bit of patience. I would say the emergence or the the emergence out of McDonough was probably a year or two, you know, maybe behind when they had anticipated, but they're there now. And it's just probably a little bit of patience from the public now and realise, okay, there's going to be arguably a couple of little slippings coming their way during the league. There will be little bits of pain along the way. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that because you have to kind of maybe, you know, that that's where you're going to learn, okay, God, we have a bit to go. And that makes fellas buy in a little bit more. But they have a brilliant sell to any young hurler in Offaly at the moment. So it's a great product that they can pitch to them. You know, you can really sit down with a young lad now that might be, you know, oh, God, will I commit to this or not? God, it's, it should be an easy sell to any young lad that wants to hurl with Offaly. And, yeah, look, you have to look at it from the point of view. It's not going to happen overnight. But they're moving in the right direction. Um you know, obviously, I would like to see from a neutral perspective or a hurling perspective, you'd like to see, you know, one or two more teams, you know, do do what Offaly have done and make their way into the, the Leinster Championship. But uh, they're definitely showing that they are not out of place here. I think it's great for the county that they finished the year. I concur with that. I think it's absolutely brilliant that they didn't take a clip in last, last Saturday off Cork. I think that's that's brilliant. And it was great for them to finish off their season on a real, you know, it's a positive note having won two cups. I think it would have took a little bit of loss off it had they got an awful beating. So that's a good thing. But um, definitely, it's it's there's a huge amount to be positive there. And just on even the manager, look, there's no doubt about it. They have their next manager lined up. I think Leo Connor is going to take over that Offaly team. Be it maybe, I don't know, maybe it's another year, maybe it's two years' time. Uh, I'm not so sure will will they get Johnny Kelly in there for three years more. You know, it depends. I don't know. I'm just kind of surmising that. I think if they get one more big year, two probably at, at a push, you know, Leo O'Connor is, 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 is obviously, I would imagine he's ambitious enough to say he wants that. And that's how then they marry up that process and how they get that done. Yeah, 2020. Is there, is, 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 sorry, Vernie, is there another crop of... of young lads coming through like well, what's the next team like because you know the way sometimes you, you can get an under 20 team and if you know if you had even a gap of three four years where you have another good team coming coming through to kind of to back up that uh, last year's 20s this year's 20s and possibly next year's 20s is there, is there, you you know that the underage setup up and off is there is there another what's the next best group coming through 
after this 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 core of of, of under twenties. There's no groups like that, but I'll tell you what. So they got to the under yes, yeah, they got to the minor final in twenty two, and then they won Leinster under twenty the year after. So that pulled in a whole heap of new fellas that weren't part of that minor setup in twenty twenty two, and even winning the All Ireland this year. There's still there's lots of new lads in there that weren't part of that minor squad in twenty two as well. So that's you're kind of looking at the core of one squad from that minor squad but there's been a heap of lads like say Charlie Mitchell Sam Burke um, who else Ben Miller there's a lot of lads it's not just one squad there's been a good few lads kind of there's like a you know you draw that diagram and there's little legs coming over there's all different different kind of new fellas been pulled in along the way so th- there's no comparable squad coming like them at underage but that group but Johnny, if if you get five or six each year if you got if you get off next year's 20, like whatever, like next year's 20, the bulk of that, that's their minor team that went toe to toe with Tip and Nolan Park today. They're both kind of a year ahead nearly. Yeah. So they have a good 20s next year. What you're ideally looking at then is if you can get through even five strong minors, if you can get through five more and each season, then you have to look at it that way. Okay, you want your squad to be competitive. But if you're bringing through, if you could bring through another five in you know, in the, over the off the minor team, five six good players over the next two three years. That that's that's going to keep it ticking over. And as you say, Ned, the cell is there for even a young fella, 15, 16, might, that mightn't be with an unbelievably good squad at the time. Just stay with it, just stick with it, just keep developing. And well, you're going to, your game's promotion is easy now at the moment, and I don't mean that in a, like no matter what it is, when you get the bounce, it's like in Limerick at the moment. You know, when you're bringing cups home and things are on a high it's easy to get young lads into the pitch. It's easy to get parents to bring them up. Do you know? So, yeah. so that's, the, that's the byproduct of this. It's funny, you were, you were saying that I was chatting to a GDA recently and they said um, they went to pick two teams for a match uh, in a train and everyone wanted to play in goals to be like Liam Hoare and then everybody was playing left-handed uh, like Adam Screeny as well. They were all changing hands as well. <laughs> so uh, they definitely have a captive audience there. Men, the other preliminary uh, All-Ireland quarterfinal at the weekend probably went pretty much as, as planned. Wexford won by, by 12 points over Leash. This uh, traditionally has always been the more difficult fixture to be competitive because you're coming in off losing a McDonough. Um, Mull, from a Wexford point of view, I think they'll be happy because, you know, and you said it in your column uh, last Saturday, d- traditionally the games that they've been expected to win have been the games that have proved to be fairly sticky wickets. But they've gotten a bit better at that. And to leave the Antrim game aside, they took care of business real well against Carlo this year. They took care of business well against Leash now. And they come into that All-Ireland quarterfinal against Clare, be it Saturday or Sunday, which we'll chat about in a minute. They come in in a, a rich vein of form and with plenty of confidence as well. Well, look, I suppose... One thing, when, when, when you lose a game at the Antrim, and look, they've been on the... They got beaten by Westmead and they drew Westmead. That kind of focuses the mind even more to say, well, look, lads, we can't take any team for granted and we've got to give every team the ultimate respect. And I think that's what what, what that's what probably played out the the last two times against the uh, Bo Carlo and again the weekend against Leash, where you know they've they've got the job done. Uh what the weekend they scored 30, 32 points. Out of that 32, 23 points came from play. The forwards are, you know, putting up the scores, and you know they're not they're not reliant on on Chin as as much either. Like you know, McDonald is coming to the fore. Uh, Rory O'Connor is chipping in, and Keen Byrne, you know, they've 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 a couple of scores off off the bench. And look, they come into the weekend's game against Clare in. Yeah, fancy it. Would I say bonus territory? I, I possibly would because from here on in, you know, if they're to win the weekend or in an all in semi-final, I think the objective for probably Key Ross or in his first year was, you know, hold on to their Division 1 status. They, re- they, re- they retained that, uh, qualified for the all in series into the last six that after doing that. So I think it's been a it's been a successful year to, for, for Wexford to date. And, you know, player... They would look for a previous encounters against Clare go back even to 2013 when, when Clare won the All Ireland. They, they brought Clare down the home street, brought him to extra time. They gave Clare the, the fright of our life two years ago. I think did they, did they beat, they beat Clare 
Did they beat Clare up in four, 14 as well? So the record, they've been a very, very good record against against uh, Clare. And I don't know, like there's, there's, there's some teams where, you know, Wexford wouldn't look at Clare as, as a car car, possibly wouldn't look at him as maybe a, a Kilkenny. They'd always believe within within the history of Wexford GA that, you know, no disrespect to Clare, 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 we, we can beat Clare. And I think even the talk down around down around here in Wexford is that, you know, they've every chance of of of, of overturning Clare the weekend. Now, can they do that without Liam Bryan? He's gonna be a colossal loss. Uh, you know, we've seen seen how much of a big influence he's had since since he came in, even even against even against Galway the down the down away Wexford Park. Oh, that was the difference. He was the difference. His, his physicality, you know, commanding at the back, showing leadership, you know, so he's going to be a big, big loss. But what they have, they have Chin and McDonald and what's the one line that struggled for Clare the last the last day out was was the Clare full back line. And go back to two years ago, uh Wexford played Clare up, up in Torres and what, what did they do? They landed both Chin and McDonald both on the edge of the square and just lamped ball in, in on top of them and they caused Clare untold problems. And even go back to that fixture as well, they were down without Rory O'Connor after, what, 10 or, 10 or 12 minutes. So, yeah, look, I think from the one thing from the Wexford point of view, they play Clare and I think possibly Clare will be more focused in what's to come, the, the in, in, will be more focused this time this time around, and I think you know Clare will be better equipped and in a better position going into this match because you know two years ago they were coming off of losing losing to uh, losing to Limerick after throwing the kitchen sink at them, played unbelievable against Limerick, just came up short, probably felt sorry for themselves, probably were probably going into the Wexford game. Still hung over from from that that uh, just coming up short against Limerick, you know, saying to themselves, well, possibly we, we, we could have won the Monster Championship. Well, it's this time around, Clare are coming into the game, and I think it'll be an easy job for Brian Lowen to get this this Clare group up for this match, knowing how poor they played in, in, in the Monster final, and knowing that there's an enormous amount of improvement in this Clare team going into this fixture of the weekend. Hey, Mull, you were shuffling around there and you didn't probably realise you were doing it, but you were you were showing off your tattoo to everybody watching on YouTube. Will you tell us what it means? Which one? <laughs> Good man, no, it was the other arm, actually. <laughs> oh, it's just Chinese right now. Jeez, we won't be delving into that now. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's the other arm, Mull? That's the one with the cross, is it? The cross, yeah, the Celtic cross, yeah. Good yeah. man, good man. I always felt it was too white to get ink, to be honest with you. I always felt you had to have a bit of a tan to get, get ink. But Nate, have you got a tattoo, no? No. No, no, no. I do a good few, actually. Just McCabna gave me one here. I think <laughs> AJ gave me one over here. Uh, different ones, yeah. <laughs> different type, <laughs> different, different. On one arm. Yeah, there are different types of tattoos, aren't they? We all have, we all have plenty of them, to be fair. Um, Nate, what sort of position do you think Wexford are coming into this weekend? Like I'd say, like box off what happened up in Corrigan Park, and you think just their season thereafter looks pretty decent. Beat all the way down in Wexford Park, beat Carlow comprehensively. We're beating a point by Kilkenny went about their business fairly professionally at the weekend never really looked like being upset or anything like that yeah they, they just look like I suppose the season and them results are reflective of you know maybe a new manager trying to gel some fresh faces with some seasoned guys trying to manage injuries trying to manage their training loads trying to look at someone like you know maybe Chin or Connor Mack or some of those guys Liam Oog Dee O'Keefe who's just you know I believe his hips have been giving him bother for quite some time now you're trying to give them enough room to let them get kind of good conditioning in, but without that impact recovery from league matches. So I suppose he, the results are that way because you're trying to get lads a good belt of game time, see what they're like. But coming into the weekends, I, I think, I think they're nicely, they're nicely positions to, to, to pull some, to pull the rug from under Clare, right? Okay. It's going to be a, a decent ask because on paper, this Clare team look really, really strong. And we can't forget, you know, over the last couple of seasons, they've had some huge results. They've had some huge performances. They've been very, very close. So I suppose what it is, is, you know, we've seen, I think last year or two years ago, especially, 
you know, there was a lot of dirty diesel in the system when they when they rolled to Wexford and, and then they were ultimately out of juice when it, when they rocked into Kilkenny. So that's probably the thing for this uh, Clare team is what kind of way are they going to rock up to this match? And and from, from an inward point of view, I'd say as a group, they're very disappointed with, with how that, that Munster final wins. But I also think there has to be little doubts now starting to creep into them. There has to be little niggles there in the back of their minds going, Jesus, you know, oh God, what's wrong here that we just can't seem to get over the line here? And yeah, I agree with Mull. They have a, they have an opportunity, but I suppose it's it's, you know, I thought there was a few little changes again for that Munster final. So, you know, what is their best 15? Will he roll with something a little bit different? You know, we haven't seen them you know, maybe go that direct route to the square, throw Shanahan in there. Duggan has given them the doubt that half forward, which is good. But I think I think Wexford float into this game as really dangerous opposition for Clare because Clare would be expected to win this. But I wouldn't be at all shocked if if, if Wexford rolled something and if you know we'll, we'll obviously get onto the fixture side of things because that that that's an impact too. But Jesus, if Wexford travel to that match and they kind of get going or they got a platform in that match. They're going to present a very, very difficult challenge for this Clare team because don't forget as well, you know, the, the still, you know, is Tony Kelly at his best yet or have we seen his best from him? And he probably needs a big performance. And if he can get going, then that could springboard Clare forward. But I suppose there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of ifs and buts in this one. But I'm I'm leaning, you know, maybe I'm putting the kiss of death on our neighbours here in Wexford, but... I won't be surprised if they if they roll something here. I mean, they're going to have to perform. They're going to have to really, really perform to the max. But have they the players? You know, you take two years ago, Rory Mac, Rory O'Connor went off injured, and Wexford were in good health at that time in that match, and it was significant. And I think they had one under injury went off as well. One of the wrecks, day. or maybe the two wrecks yeah, went off. Yeah, so they, they they lost a few lads. So they yeah, won't be yeah, over odds. They won't be afraid. I, 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 and he was doing an unbelievable job on, on Tony Kelly. I think it was was, was a Shane, Shane. was a Shane, right? Yeah. Shane was yeah. doing an unbelievable job. I'd love to see Lone try something different the weekend. Lads, so I, I, said it, I said it, the square or something. I, I, I said it a couple a couple of weeks ago during, during the league campaign. I'd love to see Lone put Kelly at six and throw John Conlon up alongside uh, Shane O'Donnell. I just think it'd be just totally different dynamic. And I just think, Jesus, it would really you know, but even even from a, even from a Clare point of view, even even the Clare supporters, even from a Clare dressing room point of view, you know, if, if Loan done something different, it will kind of it might even galvanise, might have even re-energised me even, even more. Like you know, if he does something different and it doesn't work, he's he's <laughs> under he's under he's under pressure. Yeah, then, well, though, sure you know? look, but well, sure look, Jesus, I mean, some sometimes sometimes it can be. A change can be can, can be the can be the winning and and and, and losing of of, uh, of of competitions or, or games and you can't you can't be going in with that mindset either thinking oh Jesus I'm, like look look at Gareth Southgate Sel- Jesus you know e- e- even with England like you know a great team and just defensive you, know, you, you, ha- you have you have to try something different and and I think I think Lone might do that the weekend but if he goes with the same old same old you know they might get over they might get over the line against Wexford but will they get over the line against Kilkenny or yeah. would they possibly get over the line against Kilkenny if they keep persisting you with, might, with the you same might, old same old throw, possibly not you might have to throw a tactical curveball at a team I think maybe that might be the thing for an all in semi-final but I think the key to it for Clare this weekend is they have to go and try play that match on their terms. They have to look at, well, how did we set up at the start of the Munster campaign? What is our style of play? Go back to that first half against Limerick and say, what gave us the impetus and the platform in that match to be in the commanding position we were in? Then that's that's what their strength is. So I think the one thing, they have to give Wexford their due respect. They have to plan diligently for Wexford. But I think the one thing that they can't do is they can't kind of... Uh, second guess what Wexford are going to do and build their team around what Wexford could do to them. I think they have to be mindful of Wexford. They have to be aware of the threats. But if you're telling me that those six backs that Clare have haven't the capability to deal with Lee Chin, you know, they should be. But he's a guy that's on form. So I suppose the, the worry is, is someone 
you know, has he someone there just going, right, Dave McInerney, you take him, or if he goes in full forward, Cleary, you deal with him, or whatever it is. But I think Claire, Claire have to, they can't just, yeah, something radical, an odd time that can work. Uh, I agree with Jamal. Maybe they do need to throw something a little bit different. But ultimately, you know, I think they need to be trying to go after what got them to where they, they were so far. You're, you're 100% right. And even go back to the months of final, they probably focused too much on Limerick rather than focusing on themselves, mm. you know, and trying to get the best performance of themselves. And I go back to it, even, you know, their half-back line, you know, designating John Conlon to follow Tom Morrissey wherever he went, designating um, uh, McInerney yeah, to McInerney, follow Piggly yeah. wherever he went, and likewise Ryan. And I think that took away from, you know, Clare's platform. And Clare's platform has been Ryan on the wing, McInerney on the other wing. Bob and and off. In the D. And I took that, I think that took an enormous amount away from Clare the last day out against Limerick. Men, just on that game, the obviously the big talking point at the minute is, and it looks like at the minute that game is going to go ahead on Saturday. Wexford are hosting uh, the Fail and the Gale. I presume you probably both took part in it when, when you were um, a few years younger now at this stage, but it's such a massive thing for like clubs all across the country. And when you're hosting it and awfully hosted it for the, I think it was the, was the Centenary, I think it was the host, and it was such a big thing around Offaly. Um, like, I, I don't know if Wexford are going to have any people at this match on Saturday. So the, the scene, and I'll throw it to you, Mull, the Wexford, are go, Wexford senior hurlers are going playing an All-Ireland quarter final and the whole county is going to be gripped with the failure because they're all volunteering. I know Borough are going down this weekend. They're being hosted by Halfway House Bun Clody. It'll be all hands-on in that club as it will be in every club around the county. Like, this is really something, it's something really that shouldn't be happening, really. Absolutely not. I, I didn't reach the fail. Don Garvin beat us in 1993 by by a point. But I was at two failures. Uh, my daughter played in two of them. One was one was hosted up in up in Mayo, and one was was down in Cork. It's an it's an unbelievable weekend. I actually, did a video for McCool's uh, hurling club up, up in Donegal. They're coming down the weekend, and look for the host county. It's massive. It's massive yeah. because, you know, even on a volunteer uh, base, you know, you, you need the bodies around every club. And it's not a case of it's just happening in one or one or two clubs. It's 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 across the, the whole the whole county. And I just think how it's actually after coming to this, I'll never know because three three weeks ago, uh Crow Power or fixtures or whatever knew that there's the yeah. possibility that, that Wexford are going to be there's going to be the likelihood the Wexford are, are, are going to be in an all Ireland quarter final and plans, plans should have been should have been put in place back then and I'm down here now in Wexford and the anger down here is just is is is, is massive and I think lads I honestly think if I was a Wexford point of view I actually think they need to do a, a, a new bridge or nowhere nowhere on it and say you know what you either facilitate us or we're, or we're not turning up the weekend and I, and I think the solution is, and, and it can't be, it can't be possibly at the expense of, of the Talton Cup, and, and it can't be again football v hurling. And I, and I, I, you know, the Talton Cup boys have come out and spoken, and they rightly so. But I think Wexford have to be facilitated with this, and I think the only solution is, is that have the game in Nolan Park at seven o'clock, have Dublin and Cork as a standalone fixture in Torres. That'll bring a massive crowd. And have Clare and and Wexford as a standalone fixture at seven o'clock uh, on Saturday evening, and that allows for Wexford to go and play off their their fail in the Gale, host their fail in the Gale uh, with with great honour, and then it would allow them the time to get over to Nolan Park and Kilkenny, which is possibly an yeah. hour away for for a seven o'clock throw in. Yeah, and, yeah. I think that, and I think I don't think Clare. Clare would have any arrogance to that and I don't think anyone else within the GA fraternity would have any arrogance to that. I think that don't, needs to happen. Don't, 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 tell me, don't tell me that it can't happen because the, you know, the other and preliminary rounds are only fixed this morning. So there's plenty of time for that for that to happen. It's just, but, a, it's a, just a change of venue. You move with Nolan Park and it's an evening throw in at 7 o'clock. But you see, the, pro the problem is once you get into this and this is, it delves even deeper into it, right? The, this is against the backdrop 
of a condensed season. This didn't happen. And I know there was reasons for that. And, and I suppose that's a, that's a wider argument. But we have everything being shoved in and compressed at the one time. We have clashes like this. The fail in the gale is as much an important part of the GEA as our quarterfinals. But you're also then, you, you touched on it there, John, about pushing this match into Saturday evening. The, the, what I'm hearing is that you're looking at one quarter past one and three o'clock possibly on Saturday, which is, again, the working man is going to be probably discommoded by that. You're not getting a prime time slot. Why is that? Well, because the broadcast of soccer and the URC and other sport, right? And OK, it, like we said there, we, it's not a fight against them from our point of view. We like all sports. We like to be able to watch them. But everything is on top of each other. And now, as I see it, the broadcasting of the Euros is potentially taking the primetime slot when our national game should be. And again, that's a disservice to Hurland because we have five matches left in this year's championship. Five matches. You have your two quarterfinals and you have your two semifinals and your final. And two of those are this Saturday night. And if you're going to put them at one and three o'clock for, for broadcasting, that's a clash then straight away. We can put them at, this is what we're being told, is that they cannot go ahead on Saturday evening, which would be the right way or else on the Sunday. But, 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 um, but, but, but am I right saying one is, one, one is being shown on free day or TV on, on RT and the other one is being shown on GA Go? Is that, am, am I, I right there? I don't know. I think what, I, I think, I think one has been, I think, I think the Wexford player game is down for, for RT and the other fixture is down for GA Go. So, but, but either way, we're, 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 okay, if you want to be a GA snob on this, right, because of the compressed season, we would argue is that our matches should take precedence over a URC rugby final that has nothing to do with Irish people whatsoever now and also an international soccer tournament with our national team not involved. So for me, that's what the focus should be. And it would appear, is there a, is it a broadcasting rights is now dictating the time that these matches are played at? And if that's the case, then once again, our, you know, for us hurling or our football, and again, you're right, we're not fighting against each other, but our games are being dictated to where they get sat on in terms of broadcasting because of, other sports that have nothing to do with an Irish team being involved in them. Yeah, it's definitely something that's going to play out over today. I think the fixtures will come out today. Um, it was the motion that put forward by Wexford towards Central Council needed 60% at last night's Central Council meeting and they got 57%. I think it was 27 votes to 21. So I don't know if there's any you know, wiggle room or wriggle room to, to change that. But like, I, I honestly, lads, I honestly don't know how many Wexford people would be at this on Ireland quarter final or how would it be possible for Adam to be at it given how hands on. It's, it's just a very unfair on Wexford because John said it. There's huge prestige in hosting failing the game. There's huge prestige attached to it. And if you're going to turn around and punish all those volunteers and say, yeah, just on top of the fact that you're doing such a great job hosting families, hosting people from all over the country, yeah, yeah, just watch that match and tell you you'd be grand. Yeah. And like it's not only that, that you're, 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 you're depriving an enormous amount of kids going to the match. Right? Yeah. You know, because like, let's be honest, Bill, like, I'm sure, what, there'll be 12, 13, 14 year olds in surely they're going to have brothers and sisters that are going to be interlinked with, 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 with the fail as well so kids there's an enormous amount of kids are going to lose out as well you know and imagine like lads they're playing hurling all day and they're loving it and then you bring them on to Nolan Park or something that evening and everything like the, the few you've seen it's, the, it's Christmas morning yeah isn't it like it'd be, it'd be unbelievable if you just well lads well lads could you imagine Clare and Wexford in Nolan Park we played Wexford back in 2003 Probably one of the best. You've got the old grass in the eye. When the Wexford lads put grass in your eye, that's oh, it. Didn't I, was, I was blessed, Eddie. Blessed. I, 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 I ended up getting laser in the eye. I couldn't actually, couldn't actually see through the, through, and you had through, through the eye. Yeah, would you believe? And I went in a half time, and, and you know the way the television kind of just goes kind of kind of blurry. That's the way my eye I was. It just kept getting worse and worse and worse. I played on, and, and I got the fifth point, and. I just said, "Me, oh my geez, I've had to make the call on this." And uh, luckily enough, I, I I came off came off, and uh, I was actually down in Arkeen that, that night. And the the doctor said, "Jesus, you're blessed, you came off because there was interior bleeding in the in the back of the Lord eye, Jesus. and uh, I had to get laser on the eye, surgery on the eye." Yeah, Jesus, what happened? How did? 
I don't know. I got the butt, the butt of the hurley, oh. butt, the butt of the hurley into into the into the corner of the eye. But uh, yeah, well, I thought I heard Larry O'Gorman put a bit of grass in your eye or something like that. No, yeah, the two Larrys came on and they they stole the show. That's <laughs> the Larry, the Larry O, yeah. But uh, Jesus, imagine if you had Claire and and Wexford at, at seven o'clock in the morning. Power, Jesus, lads, it'd be unbelievable. It'd be brilliant. It'd be hopping. Um, men, you're after we're after bringing in a lot of different sports there, be it rugby, soccer, and we're talking about hurling, and we obviously mentioned a bit of Gaelic football from time to time. But I know the two E maybe mm. mightn't have watched it all last night, but would have seen bits of it with with McElroy's uh, probably a bit of a meltdown at the at the end of the the major last night and his his drought goes on but what what I'd asked the 2E was is or 2E is what was your Rory McIlroy moment from your own career a moment that haunts you um, still to this day I'll go straight in straight away here the irony of me presenting a podcast with John Milan who absolutely tormented me and that day in Turles in that qualifier mull I'd say genuinely now and I never actually said this to you I'd say it took me about 3-4 years to get over and that's a fact. I was, I was pulled off after twenty. I was pulled off after twenty five minutes. All me buddies still say it to me to this day. Um, we were at Stag in Newcastle there a couple of weekends ago, and they 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 got they basically lined up this English fella to come over to me and say that I haven't been the same since two thousand and eight. I didn't know what was going on, but uh, I actually had to go to a sports psychologist after to to property property park it. That's a fact, yeah. That's a fact. The abuse I would have gotten, boys. I swear to God, um, and I'm still getting abused from so-called in inverted commas friends uh, t- to this day but that's my moment that still haunts me I think it's I think it's okay I've parked it now at this stage but Mull any what moment from your own career would haunt you still to this day yeah well look I touched on it last last week uh, two sendings off I got I got sent off uh, 2009 for, for my club uh, against Bally Connor and it's still, you know, it still plays in my mind to this day that we never done, we, we had an exceptional team, we never done back to back and we could have done three in a row and I was sent off and the height of stupidity to get involved in stuff that I shouldn't have got involved in, that would have been one, but the other one is the 2004, it's 20 years on now from getting sent off, hitting Brian Murphy, uh, took an awful lot of punishment that day and I felt I wasn't being protected by Shawnee McMahon the referee or the umpires that day and I, I lashed out in the second half and I just remember in the afternoon saying oh Jesus why why did I deal with and you know and it was only the aftermath of we we we, we went on to the all in semi-final we, we 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 met we met Kilkenny and it probably it was before Kilkenny started to go on the run probably they weren't at the peak of our powers and they were I think we came up short by Oh, you nearly, nearly beat us that day, Mull. Yeah. Very close. And, Jack and Hendy, remember, Jack, is it Jack Hendy had a great chance at the end? Jack Hendy, yeah. But just Jack went over great. the bar. Jack was great that day. And I remember even saying at the argument, saying, Jesus, you know, even if I was playing that day, you know, what could have played out? And I was actually playing out of my skin that summer as well. And the team were, were playing really well. And, you know, who knows? We could have possibly would have went on and, and won the all Ireland. But, you know, yeah, those two and but, particularly 2004, you know, even when I look back and reflect on my career, you know, those two sendings off still pain me, you know. Well, it's interesting actually because your WhatsApp profile picture is you with your back to the camera with your hands over your head like that walking off. I presume after being sent off that day, was it? That's right, Jay. Yeah, and look, I suppose, um, I suppose number 13, I suppose you can see number 13 on the back and... Yeah, I just thought it was just a picture that was, you know, it was it was a cracking picture, and I just suppose it's a kind of, you know, I suppose it's probably more the number than anything else, you know, associated with number with number thirteen and playing corner forward. Uh, Are you big dog? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, two thirteens, and I used to be a number four, lads. Jenny Mac, what? Jenny Mac. Well, very, very. You're not alone because I tell you, we. Uh, we, we we had an awful lot of joy of a, of, a, of a other cornerbacks as well, and you know what? Back in that era, there was some fantastic cornerbacks. Jeez, I mean, you think about it, Frank Lone, Wayne Sherlock, Brian Murphy, oh, um, Paul Arm in the Tipperary, Damian Reel of of Limerick, Jackie Tyrrell, um, JJ would sometimes be in the corner corner. Ollie Cannon, Jesus, that it was you know really really back then. 
Uh, Franks as well, awfully. He was a, he was a cracking cornerback as well. You know, it was it was an era where cornerbacks were. You know, it was it was hard to get the better of a cornerback back then, like you know. Yeah, Oshin Goff, Dublin, another good lad. Yeah, I was expecting a bit of grief counselling from from your mull, but you just parked it. You, you did your job. You rose to me. You never even came back and said, "Jeez, sorry about that, Fernie," or "Jeez, I should have." Oh, no, no, it's all right. No, we'll move on. We'll move on. Eddie, any moment from your own career that still haunts you? Um, there's a few. All right, yeah. Look, um, probably the off. For All Ireland, I had a glorious chance right from the clash, and uh, when Sherlock slipped, and I remember, you know, I rose it, and just as I was getting the shot off, John Gardner got a hook on me. Now a slight hook, but I can still see the ball heading for the top corner and just turning out because of the hook, and I just missed the top corner, and you know, obviously the cork went on and and, and won that game handsomely, but. Um, yeah, there's little episodes like that. There was another day, I think 2010, All-Ireland, I think a ball broke in the second half off the post and I tried to rise it. And like, do you know the way you, that time where you got the simplest thing in the world, just rise the ball? And I couldn't do it. And I actually, you know, I nearly got sick on top of the ball rather than rise it. Like just whatever it is, you just had that moment when things are going so bad. But the, the moment probably that, that probably haunts me the most was uh, in 2001, we got to the Club All-Ireland's on Bank Holiday, Easter Monday, I think it was, it was Easter Monday. And we were four points up with time almost gone and I had a shot to, you know, to put us five up and I dropped it short and I went into, I think, uh, it was a Commons or something was in goal for Aston right, and he cleared it back straight out to me. Uh, it got kind of a half block and I thought, right, this one is going dead and kill it, like just make sure it goes dead. And it just sheared the outside of the post to put us five up and we ended up getting a draw and beaten by six in extra time. And to that one, like, that's the one, I suppose, you know, Mull had a couple of close calls with the club, but that's the one, if there was a moment in time I could go back to, that's the one. And just because you look at it and go, imagine the club all Ireland, you're one hit at, if you just, you'd, you'd be, you'd be happy out, like. Yeah, and Burr, uh, the door was open as well, Castletown beat Burr. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that was, uh, yeah, Burr were actually representative. I don't think the county championship was played at the time. Was there foot and mouth or something around that time? Is that the year? Yeah, foot and, yeah. well, foot and mouth was, was the year, like foot and mouth was 2001. So we were, I remember the whole club championship, everything was put on hold. The league was put back late. So as a result, we played the semi-final in maybe February or thereabouts or the end of January up in, up in, up in Torless. We went to extra time or had a second with a replay with Six Mile Bridge. We beat them and then there was a massive gap to the Club All Ireland. And I think Cross Malina and Nemo were playing the same day. Uh, I remember Corkery and, and Kieran McDonald's. But uh, yeah, look, it's it's one that it was the only day it was played on a, on an Easter Monday. And it's the one that do you know the way you say, God, if you could go back in time, because uh it just the club was on such a high at the time. Um and it's just a brilliant thing for a club. Look, we're lucky to have tasted success county. But that's the one uh that you'd say, God that that's one that you'll you, you know you'll enjoy winter sitting on a, on a stool somewhere talking about it's gas because boys talk about oh next year and there's a crop coming or five years or whatever oh. you have to take what's in front of you don't you um, lads we just briefly um, we go through the moment of the weekend uh, brought to you in association with air Eddie I'll throw it to you um, I'd imagine your moment of the weekend could have been a small bit off Broadway and your minors getting to an All Ireland final. Yeah, it's 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 a significant thing. I, I I just was going to give a little tip of the hat to to the Offaly hurlers the way they capped off their year and respected the leash hurlers the way they approached that match. But I do think it's something we've been we've been uh, we've been off the beaten track a little bit with our minors in recent years. It's been 2014 since we last won one, and this would be sweet if we could pull this one off because you're obviously up against the neighbours, which is always going to bring the best out of both. But I think I'm right in saying like both of them went down to extra time as yeah. well. Like what 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 incredible matches them young lads served up. Um but yeah, this is there's there's a couple of nice little players on this team. I think a few of them young enough next year, Adrian Mullins, younger brother there, you know, some good talent there. But uh yeah, if if ever I know people probably go well to hell with you, but God could Kenny could do it a minor all Ireland, we'd love it. We'd love one. Um we you know, it'd be great for them, but uh, brilliant to be there. Mad to think you're going back to 2014, I think, for that. Yeah. That's mine on All-Ireland. Uh, Mull, your moment of the weekend? Uh, look, for me, Dan Burke, his performance the weekend, he got one score in the was the second half was just oh, 
a thing of beauty. And even even his role last weekend, Johnny Kelly was very, very clever. He kind of brought him back kind of, I wouldn't say kind of a sweeper, but he was kind of, you know, he was everywhere in around that half, half back, like midfield, the, the link player. And it's just been a an unbelievable three, four weeks for for Dan Borg being the being the under twenty captain, the, the winning the Joe McDonough. And the easiest thing for him would have been just kind of say, you know what, that's my job done. But you know, to put on the performance that he did the weekend and oh geez, I know you 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 have him as as, as your number two ranked player uh, going forward for the next five years. Lads, this 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 kid is gonna have an unbelievable future. I mean what he's shown even even so far and what he's only 19 years of age I, I, I'm really looking forward to watching this, this lad for the next four or five years and Jesus lads when he hits 24, 25 he's going to be an unbelievable player yeah you and me both are looking forward to a mull um, but that's great stuff lads thanks a million once again for a packed show my thanks to Eddie and John for joining me once again we'll be back next Monday to look back on the All-Ireland quarterfinals between Dublin and Cork and Clare and Wexford and in the meantime don't forget to rate, review and follow the show on Apple, Spotify or wherever you get your podcast from thanks a million for listening and goodbye